Hi, everyone. My name is Phil Fager, and I'm the Partner Account Manager with Bookkeeping Express. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, 10 Tasks to Keep Your Business in Good Health. As a franchisee for one of our franchise or partners, we want to help your business grow and succeed. BKE has over 30 years of experience working in the small business world, so we know how much work and dedication it takes to run a business. And we've heard it all. Uh, what we're aiming to do today is offer some tips to help keep your business healthy or maybe bring in a new idea or even just to offer a reminder to add something to your, to your weekly, monthly, yearly checklist. So number one, financial overview. We recommend doing a financial overview every month. That means going back through the last 30 days and reviewing every invoice and making sure of what's coming in and noting what's still expected. Going through all of your expenses for the month and double checking that everything has been accounted for, taking note of your payroll for the month, your other bills, your taxes, which yeah, I'm sure everyone listening is saying, of course, you know, that's pretty standard. But unfortunately in our experience, not everyone takes the time to do this. Over the course of a month, business can get bogged down by hundreds of issues from big to small. But taking a moment to step back, reorient, and get back to the financial basics can help you get your arms around your business. So get together with your bookkeeper or accountant and just make sure everything has been taken care of. This way you know of any potential issues. We suggest even going a bit further and comparing those numbers with those from the previous month or the previous year. So you could see how your business is doing on a larger scale. You know, like I said, we've spoken to so many business owners who can get bogged down in the day-to-day -day minutia they don't see the larger trending issues that may be coming. We've seen people have to spend thousands of dollars because their books get left to the side or have a number of mistakes because they're not able to take the time at the end of the month to sit down and reassess. If anyone here is already working with us, please feel free to schedule a monthly catch up with your senior accountant. They'll be more than happy to go over your monthly financials with you. Next is vendor statements. In the same vein, we suggest reviewing your vendor statements on a regular basis as well. For example, I, and I'm assuming most of you, tend to have a lot of my household bills automatically debited from my account. I usually don't look through the statements too much. I'll take a peek at you know, maybe my heating bill in the winter to see how much it changes. But for the most part, I've let that continue on in the background. But every once in a while, I'll, I'll, we'll take a closer look. Once I discovered that my cable bill had risen unexpectedly, yeah, you know, it wasn't by much, just an extra ten dollars, and I gave him a quick call and it got lowered back to where it was before. There's no reason not to do the same with your vendors. For example, back in March, when we first became aware that COVID was going to be a bigger issue than we expected, we had a few of our customers calling us, nervous about how are they going to meet their bills because their revenue went down to nearly zero, and we ended up giving some of them a temporary reduction in their bill to. Uh, just because they called and, and asked for some help. And you never know when an old vendor of yours is gonna have a special going that you can utilize. Or maybe uh, there's a pricing structure has changed and your business can fit into a new price model. Every once in a while, it's worth just giving a quick call or email just to check in and say hi. Annual sales. So this is kind of a two-parter. Uh, first off, if you haven't done so already, Set yearly sales goals for yourself. Work with your business coach and go through previous year's sales and put together a growth plan. Then at the end of every month, look and see how you're tracking. Are you where you need to be at? Did you rise month over month? If you did, did that happen last year as well? And find out why. Here at BKE, we have an analytic dashboard that we can provide that tracks our customers' financial performance. And when the year ends and figure out why your sales were higher or lower than expected. Obviously 2020, there's a big reason why some of our customers' sales goals probably aren't going to be, you know, be made, but we're all hoping maybe back in January. But there's other ways to track how you're doing. We've seen customers who dropped in March, but then quickly recouped. We've had some partners that had record summers. Now they're looking through their sales and seeing what they did that can be uh, replicated. Work with your coaches, your mentors, your accountants, your bookkeepers, and take this information with you as you start to think about other areas of your business. Inventory. I know not everyone here has inventory, but for those that do, setting a regular task to focus on it is unenviable. 
regularly manage your inventory levels and match that with your financials. Here at PKE, we've heard stories from customers who became a little relaxed with their inventory counts and were surprised to find out that they were losing little bits of material here and there. You know, all adds up though, and it can come as a shock if it's not attended to regularly. If keeping tabs in your inventory isn't your strong suit, or you just don't have the time, check to see if there are other solutions that might fit the bill, or see if you can expand someone's role to take that on. Work with your financial experts to see if adding costs to track your inventory might actually be able to save you money in the long term. We've seen that be the case before as well. Retaining customers. So I'm in sales and I've been in sales for well over a decade. I can still remember my very first few months in my very first sales job. I had zero customers and nothing but a telephone and Google to find some. And I'm sure everyone here has been through that at some point. You know, maybe you purchased a location that had customers already, but you still needed to find new ones. We put so much time and effort into building that customer base. And then after months and even years of hard work, finally turned that quarter and you could start relying on revenue coming in. But I remember working with a customer for well over a year. I gained his trust, was getting to know him on a personal level, and I eventually was winning all of his business. And he was a great customer. Even his low spending months were better than most of my customers' high spending months. And then one day he stopped calling. He stopped answering my calls. Every once in a while I get an email from him, but it was asking about something that I already purchased and just needed support on. Pretty quickly learned a pretty valuable lesson there. One that I bet some people here might have learned as well. It doesn't matter how much work you put in or how friendly you are, there's a lot of competition out there. If you don't nurture that relationship, someone will feel it. I thought I was doing enough, but the proof was in the loss of business. When I thought back, what I realized was that I had taken our business relationship for granted because I thought we had a good personal relationship. You know, this customer of mine in one of our chats told me all the reasons why he took his business from one of my rivals and gave it to me. And I remember feeling really proud of that. But none of those reasons he gave me was because he wanted a new friend. And I felt pretty embarrassed once I realized he was probably having that exact same conversation with one of my other competitors. I lost his business mind share. Your business owns a percentage of your customer's mind share. And that percentage fluctuates day to day depending on how much they need you, but there's that base minimum. The minute they think of something that you sell or a service that you provide, you're not in their mind at the exact same time as when you've already started to lose their business. So keep up with your mind share with them with constant contacts, thank yous, visits, even tiny gifts. Never take your business relationship for granted. But also make sure that you're delivering content that is actually meaningful and helpful to them. Unique messaging centered around values that you can add to their life or to their business. And also remember that no matter what you do, some churn is expected. And build that into your projections for the year and your expectations of time and effort to find new customers to replace those. Social media. Uh, love it or hate it, uh, social media is an important part of a business now. And think about it as a part of retaining customers. Having a social presence through Facebook or Twitter, or LinkedIn, helps with the goal of uh, keeping mind space with your customers. If a customer engages with you, it gives you the opportunity to get your arms even further around them. I personally use LinkedIn as a way to not only amplify events DKE hosts, but to stay engaged with customers I currently have, as well as those I've worked with in the past. And I've actually gotten some great referrals because I kept in touch with them. More importantly, social media gives you the opportunity to build your brand as an industry leader. So curate articles that you think are helpful and post them. Write quick blog posts and amplify them. This gives you the chance to remind your customers and potential customers that you're a trusted resource for them when they need something that you can provide. And then keep on it. Uh, for example, at BKE, we constantly push out blog posts and helpful hints. And we don't necessarily get a new customer with every single thing we publish, but it does help build our brand as a leader in the industry and in that we can be a trusted resource for someone when the time comes that they need bookkeeping help. Website activity. For some franchisees, a lot of this is done at the franchisor level. But it's important to find out if you can, what kind of traffic a personal page is getting. Just like with your financial information, it's data that can be recorded and tracked regularly. How many people are coming in? How long are they staying? Keeping track of these stats can help you if you're forecasting. 
but it's a content just like with your social media presence that can help add to the actual customers. Is the content on your website engaging? You know, people typically leave a website just after a few seconds. And, and if they don't see anything of value quickly, they're gonna go. So is it presented in a pleasing way? Is it optimized for mobile devices? Just think about when you're looking for something for yourself or your family. How many websites jump out at you as special or fantastic? And you probably don't remember because we don't consciously track websites when we're doing their job. But we do recognize when a website is old or filled with outdated information or worse yet, clip art from like the 80s or 90s. And you're probably not going to buy from them. Keep up on your site and just make sure it stays fresh. Industry news. So this can have the look as the easiest one to do on this checklist, but it's also a lot of times relegated to the end of your to-do list. So then Friday afternoon or Sunday, Saturday morning comes and you have other lingering tasks or maybe just some well-deserved rest time. And the idea of taking that time to read some trade magazines or visit some websites doesn't sit with you as something you want to do. So in the past, I proactively set some time on my calendar every week, maybe Wednesday afternoon for a half hour to do my reading. And I force myself to keep on it, especially if you're in an industry that has constant changes, and upgrades, because we all know how beneficial it is to keep up on it. So setting a personal cadence to execute that will have large benefits as time goes on. And security. And not just making sure you have an alarm in if you have a physical shop. Data security should be one of the first things you take care of as a business owner. But unfortunately, we've seen this not be the case all the time. Your data is one of the most valuable assets you have and needs to be consistently taken care of and planned on. It's not just having security on your computer. Redundancy is your friend. So back up your data regularly. Have that as a set task every week or every month and then have a plan in place in case the worst happens. Keep a copy of your data in a second physical location. Back it up to the cloud. Uh, for businesses that don't file a disaster plan and then a disaster happens, the chances of them staying in business is shockingly low. Put a plan in place, test it, and stick to it. It could be annoying, but it's worth it immeasurably to your business's health. Consult with an IT professional and make sure you have a good plan in place. And finally, take some time every month to huddle with your advisors, get input from the experts at your fingertips. For example, here at BKE, we assign every franchise partner of ours a senior account that's available for every franchisee. Part of their job is to be available for our customers to answer any questions they have. When we publish financial statements, we have customers who will give us a call just to go through it and ask some questions. It, we're a part of their advisors. As a franchise owner, you have a ton of resources at your disposal, and who knows just how many years of experience that's available to you. So take the time, build up a group, and let them get to know you, and then utilize them. And not just people, too. Use the analytics and comparables if your franchise has them. Look at different categories and see how you're comparing to similar locations, and give them a call and see how they're doing and how they did what they did. You'll always find some unexpected positive results. So that is our list of 10 tasks we believe every franchise owner should regularly have. Here at BKE, we can actually help with a number of those tasks. We can help with your monthly financial review and currently do so with many of our customers, as well as helping you see the data behind your yearly sales so you can forecast and see trends as they form and we'll host your financial statements for as long as you work with us. And we'll become one of your financial advisors that you'll have at your fingertips. Our goal is to take away as many of these day-to-day -day bookkeeping tasks off your plate so it gives you the time to focus on everything else. And we offer bookkeeping packages, and if you're one of our franchise partners, we already have a price specifically for you already. We also offer cleanup and catch-up work for our new monthly customers if they need to get additional help before tax time. If you're interested in learning more, all you need to do is schedule a 20-minute consultation with one of our new client consultants. They'll ask all the questions we need as well as answer any you may have. And with that, we can provide you a quote in 24 hours. Plus, we'll also do a free review of your current books. 
you know, think of it as having your books getting a free health check. That way, even if you don't move forward with BKE, you'll at least be aware of any potential issues that might be lying in your books. You could set up a consulta consultation with us by either clicking here or reaching out to, out to us by phone or email here. So thank you all very much for taking time out of your busy day to join me. Yeah, I'll open up this time for any questions, but please feel free to email us here if you prefer to ask that way.